some of the things, some of the information that we've, we've gathered. And if anyone's got additional comments, uh, we, can, we can add them to our lists. Uh, I'll start off, I think. And then uh, we'll have the, the rest of the team uh, follow suit. So my station, or the station over here, is Marine Facilities and Environmental Quality. And 
you know, uh, the first comment off the bat was sea level rise to, to make sure that we um, address sea level rise, uh, particularly at, when, in our recommendations for moving forward. Partnership with Parks, parks and Recs, rec, uh, better collaboration, communication, coordination with that, with that agency. Um, laundry, better laundry facilities. The closest laundry facility is five miles from here. Uh, the wooden docks are in need of upgrade. Um, uh, parking lot surface is uneven, and, and besides from the safety issues and the flooding, um, I think it was generally agreed that sen sends the wrong message. And if we want this to be an attractive place, a destination, then that, that has to be improved. Um, maintenance, uh, street cleaning, maintenance of the parking lot, uh, the ramps to the docks um, get slippery, apparently. Uh, except for dock 11 is, is, is cement, so that's a, a better surface. The other docks um, are steeper and uh, tend to get, get slippery. Safety ladders to, in case for self-rescues, in case somebody falls in. Uh, we, don't have, we don't have those. Better signage, wayfinding, promotional signage, educational signage. Um, lighting. Better lighting, that, uh, that better lighting would uh, increase security, reduce perhaps speeding, I guess, teenagers. It's, a, it's a unbelievable that we all were one at one time, come in here and uh, drive their cars really fast. Um, and it, uh, there were a couple people who pointed out, several people pointed out that the Harvard District has done a really good job um, on a number of issues. One of them is removing damaged or derelict boats. Um, making sure that there's sh uh, hot water in the showers. There's, a, there's an security, uh, electrical service at the dock. The staff is, is excellent. They're engaged. They're responsible. They're responsive. Um, the fact that the San, uh, South San Francisco PD does a, does a loop in this parking lot, um, uh, people felt uh, contributed to. These are some of the positives contributed to the security, um, and those are things that people felt that the Harvard District was doing really well. Those are things that we, they felt needed to be perpetuated. Um, a marine center with boat storage, all types of boats, um, and space for marine-related businesses is necessary here to support the, uh, support the marina and perhaps attract other users. Longer term leases will incentivize investment and economic vibrancy. Um, again, storage for dinghies and, and, and smaller vessels. Um, educational environmental pro pro programs, uh, perhaps with the school district, uh, was recommended that that might help um, promote the, the marina and the park better. A guided, uh, guided tours, I know I saw the uh, National Working Waterfront and Waterways website that they have an app now that you can build an app. Someone comes in, puts earphones on, and can get a guided tour. Um, the beach, we need a better beach. I don't know if anyone's been to Sausalito and seen the beach there in the Marin ship. Uh, that could prove to be a, a destination. We need more sand. Everybody's looking uh, for places to, to dump their clean, clean fill. Uh, Storage came up again. Longer leases came up again. Again, staff excellent, responsible, responsive, respectful. Can't speak well enough about them. Um, electric vehicle charging station. Harness the wind. Uh, we got wind issues here. Uh, a pilot program, maybe an educational opportunity. Um, competitions for small boats. The cap on the landfill and the liner underneath the landfill, how those might be uh, impact potential development here. That needs to be understood and described in layman's terms. Um, picnic tables at the foot of the piers with uh, breaks and barbecues. Um, better improvements to the bike path and then um, Boat owners having to prove their vessels seaworthy. Uh, there might be um, potentials for improving life in Moisture Park Marina uh, and Park. So that was the 
Marine facilities, environmental quality, station, next station. Andy Grace will take the next station. So I was uh, taking notes. on um, shoreside facilities and circulation and parking. Um, so essentially, kind of the general theme of uh, what I was hearing as people were coming up was, you know, there's no, there's no real reason why this shouldn't be um, a vibrant and multi-use harbor um, that has people coming in on the weekends and um, especially the commuters coming <coughs> in. Um, from the ferry and uh, all of these people are kind of finding other uses for being here, whether it's shopping or um, spending their money at restaurants or recreational activities, um, that kind of thing. And I think there's a lot of reiteration from Henry Station for the, the possibilities for facilities here, um, which I think just goes to show that there is a lot of popular support for something like an educational facility or um, water sports, that kind of thing. So um, the first thing that came up was there should be better connectivity um, between the ferry station and businesses out in South San Francisco. Um, you know, can we can we rope in other transportation agencies? Can there possibly be a public bus? Um, can there be a better waiting area with benches and trees and what have you? Um, and. Uh, it's mentioned later on, but I think you know, some sort of food kiosk or a cafe, somewhere where commuters can spend their money, and that can go into the revenue for the harbor. Um, and there should also be better signage, both here as to how to get um, elsewhere, and then you know, out in South San Francisco as how to get to Oyster Point. Um, it sounds like a lot of people who do come here, maybe for a one-off event, aren't even aware that it's here. And part of that is. There are no signs. Um, or, I should say, not enough signs. Public restrooms, um, perhaps there should be a public restroom closer to the ferry dock. You know, there's one, uh, at least a five minute walk away, and that is arguably too far. Um, and another big one was when the ferries come in, and it sounds like a lot of people who are in the liberal wards uh, have been trying to get them to slow down when they come in and when they come out because it's shaking the boats and the docks. Um, and they're coming up against a lot of friction with that. But it seems like something that could possibly be regulated fairly easily. Um, talked about parking and um, how, you know, even if you have a boat out here, you still have to move it every 72 hours. And the counterpoint to that is, well, you know, how, do we want to favor residents um, who are living here or have a boat here? Or, you know, how do we mitigate that with making sure people aren't stored there? So, things to talk about. And it sounds like everyone is um, somewhat frustrated with the unpaved parking lot that either puts dust or mud. And I think uh, it's been a, the harbor master and the district has for a while been um, working to pave that. Um, going back to, you know, business ideas. Uh, can we bring in a restaurant? Should it, should it be high end? How can we get the most money? How can we get the community, um, you know, we don't want to sort of not let it. a more expensive restaurant, you know, is only going to attract, say, you know, your workers who are out in San Francisco. We want everyone to be able to spend time here and enjoy themselves. So, you know, what's the best option? Um, there was talk of the youth sailing program, which I think is in the works with the Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, it should be coming soon. Laundry, can there be more, better um, laundry facilities? Can we pave the bike path more? And um, talk about possibly having a little more police enforcement, a little more police uh, representation at night around here. And um, more about kind of taking advantage of all the biotech workers. This is really a, a capital of biotech workers, and they're looking for places to spend their time and spend their money. Yeah, and then the last thing that kind of came up besides public Wi-Fi um, was, I guess, uh, Doc 14 is somewhat decrepit, and you know, 
could that be replaced with some sort of business generating? Um, I'm sorry, revenue generating business. Yep, and that was station two. So Brian has the last one. So I had a uh, revenue generation, but it sounds like uh, it was a key topic in all stations. So I'll just try and run through, sort of confirm what we heard at the other at the other locations. Um, a couple things, uh, sort of one of the main themes that we heard was that generally more commercialization uh, of this area is welcomed, uh, especially as a means uh, to finance some of the infrastructure improvements that are needed, um, you know, just with the flooding issues and, and you know, what it's built on, there's kind of an understanding that uh, there's, there's going to be difficulty in, in paying for that without having some um, some commercialization, uh, or at least maybe a more effective um, use of the space for commercial activities. Uh, <clears throat> and so as you can see here, there's a lot of uh, tick marks uh, next to restaurants, small stores, uh, especially things that can serve uh, the biotech industry, which we heard before. Um, they're sort of a big constituent, big daytime constituent, uh, and, the, and that's dovetails with uh, the ferry t the ferry terminal people coming and going that right now they're just transient so uh, find ways to uh, at least capture some spending from from those folks uh, and so with that things like expand uh, the WTA partnership uh, maybe capitalize on some of their investments uh, or cost potential investments um, uh, here's an interesting one uh, renting at uh, Renting the Harbor District offices here at 400 Oyster Point, there was an idea they could consider uh, sharing those facilities uh, elsewhere, elsewhere in the district, maybe save a little money. So maybe not revenue enhancement, but cost savings. That's, uh, that's part of it. Uh, the bait shop, uh, the bait shop was originally thrown out as an idea for maybe some code tenancy with the, the district offices, but there's also an idea that uh, what was in the bait shop uh, with good management, maybe a little investment. Um, what was going on there, a small uh, retail store and a bait shop could do very well here. Uh, it was it was doing well or had the potential to do well, it just uh, was mismanaged. So that's one thing. Other things like bike rentals. Uh, we heard a laundromat. I know there's laundry service here, so I don't know how much of a revenue generating uh, opportunity that is, but it's something to consider. Uh, food trucks, so sort of coinciding with restaurants, ways to, to capture uh, the, the people coming and going through the district. Uh, another interesting one that has sort of a uh, back and forth dialogue was upgrading the slips and then potentially charging higher rent for those. However, we heard that the, the price point is already sort of at where it's at uh, to be competitive. Uh, there's already vacancy here, so that you sort of have to understand what the feasibility of that is before we move forward on that. Um, there's an idea to increase the percent of slips uh, for residents uh, to maybe as a way to avoid the need to increase rent. Um, then uh, there was there were questions, you know, I know that the city of South San Francisco is here and we want to get your input, but there was a question about a better understanding uh, what share of, of properties that came in the Shorenstein development would go to the district versus the city of South San Francisco. Um, so it's something to, to look into and we'll, we'll look into that as we write this strategic business plan. Um, other ideas, water sport recreation center uh, that includes youth programs, um, sort of maybe smaller vessels things. And, and, the, and these idea, this idea dovetails with something else which we heard was um, you know, bringing a beach. It was previously mentioned, the beach here. Beaches are rare in San Francisco. so. Uh, maybe it's something that's you know an amenity that can make uh, Oyster Point more of a destination place to come. Um, and, you know, also along with you know water sport recreation center, uh, maybe teaching facilities, uh, teach water related classes. Uh, this can be in partnership with the city of South San Francisco Parks and Rec Department. Uh, it sounds like they're you know willing and it's sort of something that they want. So there's opportunity for partnership there. Um, and uh, you know you can make. Make Oyster Point, I heard, heard a couple of comments about making Oyster Point a destination. Uh, someone said for families, that's sort of true to its park roots, uh, which think the land can preserve that, but also just for all residents and, and visitors, just make it a destination place. Um, it's got sort of the infrastructure to, to do that, so capitalize on that. Um, 
the, the sounds like there's uh, some hotels coming uh, to the city of South San Francisco that sort of may help feed into the, the visitor serving uses that could potentially come here, such as restaurants, such as you know other, other retail uh, stores and things that want to keep people here at the, at the harbor. Um, Another idea was an annual program of activities, uh, events, things that sort of are on a can calendar. They happen annually. They become, you know, sort of ingrained in, in the culture here that you just promote activity here. Good ideas. And then also that, of course, dovetails with better marketing of those activities, making sure the word is out, people know that there are things going on here. Um, another key thing was uh, basically the, the, the boat marine related industry and services here, there's definitely a, a place for it. We heard that there, there's a market for it here, um, and it, it should be something that, that remains here. It can be expanded upon, um, but it also, uh, it can also be uh, done with sort of a more efficient use of land and in a way that still welcomes um, other revenue generating opportunities, other visitor serving things. So. Uh, and you know, it's a, it's a good question, sort of summarizes it, but it was asked at one point, uh, uh, why is Sierra Point a cash cow in, in uh, Brisbane? It's a it's a harbor there, and um, you know, it's, it's sort of determined that one, it's the docks, uh, and two, it's also the, 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 they're sort of a nice quality of docks. They're all concrete. They're new. The facilities are nice, uh, and also uh, that wind and the, the climate is nice there. It has a nice little microclimate, and those those it was interesting because those are two things um, that uh, sort of. Oyster Point is facing. One, the, the wind is high. Uh, this was also elaborated on, and there's a representative from Pillar Point, at the Yacht Club at Pillar Point, and uh, their, one of their facilities creates a windbreak. And um, I think somewhere on here it says, you, you know, you can't underestimate the value of that and getting people to sort of stay where they're at and come out and hang out. And so those, with the wind issues that are here, with sort of the, the climate issues that are here, is one of the things we keep back in the mind, uh, maybe maybe the idea of, of making a, a windbreak or creating facilities that sort of shield you from the wind here and make it more pleasurable to, to come and stay uh, and hang out and then spend your money. Um, so, so again, a true, you know, true marine facility and sort of the ancillary uses, it was, it was, you know, there's this notion that those could work symbiotically with these visitors serving things, activities that are going on. Um, you know, trying to reduce the vacancy, the slip vacancy here, that, you know, may happen with just general improvements to the facilities. Um, partnering, partnering with uh, academic institutions, again, it's just another sort of use that could, could work well here, uh, bring activity here. Uh, beach upgrades we talked about, uh, Yacht Club we talked about, and then um, there was another idea to uh, potentially provide a discount for city and district, uh, pro provide a discount on uh, leases, uh, excuse me, slip leases for s city of San Francisco residents and Harbor District uh, uh, folks who have annual leases already, um, just because they can help sort of keep eyes on the dock and maybe lessen the need for some of you know, outside security, those type of things, improve the maintenance and the uh, uh, through the maintenance and the maintenance and sort of the upkeep of the district, um, sort of at the, the ground level. <coughs> With that, that was revenue enhancement. Um, if anyone has any other comments, you know, you'd like us to take down, or did we not, you know, hear something right? You want us to to mark it down or, or change, you know, take any additional notes, please, by all means. Yeah. Uh, Peter. If I can pass along a couple of comments I received from uh, a couple of other. Yeah. Participants in the workshop tonight. I uh, want to make sure it's got written down so we can get the documents. One was uh, uh, kayak storage. Oh, okay. They already referred to other kinds of uh, non motorized vessels, but uh, there was a specific reference to kayak storage. What would be there? Okay. Uh, in, the, in the style of potentially a uh, bicycle locker or something small, yeah. efficient. Yeah, or, or something that could be uh, 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 on a float next to us and make it slow. Convenient to get it in the water. That was one item. Another item was uh, on the educational, making better use of the whole facility for a broader range of the public. Uh, the uh, idea of trying to bring together one
once again, uh, the Marine Science Institute of Redwood City with local school districts from South San Francisco uh, and Brisbane, uh, Daly City, San Bruno, and so on, uh, whose school children uh, and pupils could then uh, take advantage of the Marine Science Institute's uh, boat that takes school uh, children from other communities around the bay to learn about the marine environment. Uh, so that was a comment uh, that, that uh, should be pursued, uh, basically, with the Harvard District just providing a dock for the boat, really being midwifing the connection between the school districts and the institute. Uh, so those, those are a couple of things I heard from the others. Great. Yeah. Just yeah. comments, I'm speaking back on what Peter Fernell is saying. I've had conversations with Supervisor Dave Pine, and he's also interested in, in things happening here at Boys Creek Point relative to increasing interest in using this as a teaching facility. Okay. Um, secondly, um, the city, through an agreement, uh, a commitment from Genentech to provide back the bathroom facilities on the Bay Trail. We've been working with Peter Brunel. We are going to site them here at Oyster Point. And we have been working with Scott to site them here on Oyster Point somewhere uh, close to where the ferry terminal is and whatever. But we're, the city is working with, with, with Scott on that. Um, thirdly, um, within reason, I talked to my senator Gardarino here, and we, get, and, and we are looking at, we were providing more wayfinding for the marina here. And so we can reason if you give us a list, uh, we can I have volunteered for our public works department to put up some signage. Don't go bonkers. We will do more things with this. Um, um, I sit on also sits on the human sense of gesture for the alliance, so we are exploring all the shuttle service, how uh, we can get it not only, there's, there's ample shuttle service east of 101, so we understand we need to get over to west of 101, but parameters, and we're now working with the city to look at the man. I'd like to thank the Yacht Club again for letting us use their facility, Tom. Did I hear anything about the haul out facility or that was just going to be a improvement? Yeah, actually, um, yeah, we did. Uh, there, that was mentioned uh, as, a, as a way to um, you know, maybe in, increase uh, or capture some of the demand uh, that could come here but is sent elsewhere because uh, just because you, there's no uh, haul out or travel lift uh, to yeah. take some of the larger vessels out. Um, yeah, so we should just make note of it's that. It is in here, yeah. It's part of that. There's ancillary, you know, there's opportunities for guys, like rigging contractors, welding contractors. I mean, it could potentially, if there were sufficient demand, create opportunities for a, a business cluster or a center, which is one of the things that was brought up earlier as well. Yeah. So, okay. Also, when you have, uh, you have the small boats and storage. We have lasers. We're trying to put a program together with the city of South San Francisco. We have lasers. We have storage <coughs> things on there. And there's ways to get them in and out of the water. Again, kind of like the haul out thing. The haul out, what you're talking about is the yeah, cradle. Yeah, the cradle. Yeah, because we have a lot of boats here. I just got through bringing my boat out there and, and we're talking about thousands of dollars that are generated. One, there's five of us that spent over $20,000 in the last year getting our boats in and out of the water. And that money could have come to South City rather than go to San Francisco. Right. So, yeah, and that's, that's what we heard, um, you know, that uh, some of the business, you know, they call here, but they're sent elsewhere because the services just aren't here. Every one of these boats out here have to be every two or three years have to be pulled out of the water. Yeah. 
and do the job at absolute minimum. Right. And when you pull it out of the water, you know it's going to do the bottom, you do everything else that needs to be upgraded. You know, so right. it's a lot of money that goes to the people. You can see it. Yeah, perhaps one of the recommendations would be to kind of quantify that demand and do a survey. You I think you have that many boats here, you can figure out how much the numbers are. Okay. I, can I think there was a report like that in 07 done in the Harvard District. We, we just conducted one for the city one day. I think when you get into that hull repair, I think that's when you start to get into industrial activity. Once you add industrial activity, you're going to get into stormwater um, compliances with permits and stuff. A lot of almost every boat yard in the city of San Francisco has been sued in the last two years because of their industrial stormwater permits not being in full compliance. The state's just changed the permit, a lot of protection in the state permit, but there's going to be a lot of changes that people may not be able to achieve if they have those type of businesses, the haul outs, the, the cleaning, the haul repairs, and that it's it's not advantageous for a business owner to get into that business because of the liability from third party lawsuits coming into it. Just, I, I'm an environmental consultant that deals with businesses and tries to help out businesses. That's why I wanted to come to this to help you guys kind of hear what the actual harbor has issues. I grew up in San Pedro, Southern California, transplant up here. Mom lives in Foster City. I live in Fairfield, but I'm around the community a lot. I, I, I've seen what's happened from uh, the environmental side and industrial activity, and it's, it's not a, a safe ground for any business to kind of open up what you're asking for. That's why you pay a premium to bring San Francisco, because those people are fighting lawsuits that are in millions of dollars of lawsuits because they didn't even understand the <coughs> permit that they were supposed to follow. Um, so there's a lot of non like with government agencies understanding what fire codes, hazmat codes, you know, stormwater, air quality, all that is not overseen by anyone. There, there's not an agency that kind of helps new businesses, old businesses get into compliance. And you know, I only deal with stormwater. I just know there's a lot more besides stormwater that's involved with industrial activities because once you get into like you said all repairs, the maintenance of you know sanding down boats and getting a uh, new Coatings done, new zinc plate, plates that need to be put on the, um, uh, you know, things. So it, it, there is a demand for it, but then can the Harbor District, can the government agencies overseeing these harbors help those businesses understand what's going on? And I believe for us, what's the point? The city oversees the permit that is for the Harbor District, but I don't know if the people in the, in the district, like the businesses, understand, you know, what's all involved. With they may be doing some sampling and stuff like that, but not know what their liability is to the business because of the misunderstanding of what the permit, who's responsible, you know, what's involved with this. Yeah, I, hear, I hear this kind of nonsense all the time. The reality is this lot, you know, we have environmentalists that bring things to the extreme. We're talking about people that are spending money, mega bucks, to get their boats done all over the state, yeah. not just here. You know, South Alameda, Santa, uh, uh, well, every, every county in, in, yeah. in, in, in this area. I don't know if you're in Southern California where you're at now, I really don't care. Yeah. All I know is the fact is, it is I, just went, I just went, excuse me, you have the floor before I have the floor now. Uh, we have, oh, there's over 150 boats that are at the San Francisco Boat Works right now that are having their bottoms done. They go out of their way to block off all that, all the, the stuff that comes off the boat, and they vacuum that up, and they and they they do the proper removal of, of the uh, whatever's on the bottom. Most of it's you know stuff that's coming out of this like this marina right here, which is we have oysters, we have all sorts of crazy yeah. stuff that's coming in there. They do all that stuff, uh, you know. Well, it, that, it, that's the me. Yeah. I, you know, I have a floor. You know. I'm you on your side. I, I want to bring business here. It's, yeah, it's the point is, is, is when we spend thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, that get to, I'd rather see them come here to South San Francisco. I don't want to hear somebody that says, you know, you can't do it because there's a there's a, a, a garter snake that's in my backyard. There's a, a, a red-legged frog that's in, you know, on, the, on the mountain. Uh, the blue-legged what was the monarch blue. They all exist, and they will exist as long as we're on this planet. The truth is, we also have to continue to do our businesses. And while we're still doing there, the business owners 
this. I was a business owner for over 40 years. I know I had to comply with whatever the laws are at that point in your moment in history. So I don't want to listen to somebody say, that's not even living here, tell me that we can't do business because we can't comply with the law. But that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. And I want to hear it, OK? If, if, if a business owner can't comply with the law, they're not going to be a business owner. Sure. No, that's what I'm saying. There's just no help from the compliance aspect from all parties. We're, like getting, business, we're getting way beyond yeah. what the business plan would be doing. But that's what I'm saying. Like the business plan should be helping those businesses understand its 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 requirements, I think. And that, like right. the city of San Francisco has done a lot of involvement of trying to make new businesses that are coming in be aware of what's what the you know the, those guidelines are. Now I want to see business. Trust me, I, I, I'm all about the ocean. I've been a lifeguard for ten years in the LA County beaches. And I moved up here for a job in environmental, you know, consulting, you know, which I still have a part of that, you know, anything you do goes to the ocean. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the Midwest, but to have a business plan set for a district or for a harbor that can promote those businesses by promoting them to come in here, but also have them understand you just can't come here, no whole dollar back to West type of business that you just did it because it made you money. I've already seen businesses in San Francisco start up, just completely disappear, made millions of dollars off of the public being charged to dump the trash, left the uh, business, the property owner from the district completely out of millions of dollars of you know trash that's left on their site because business came in, started business, disappeared, you know, technique. I'm not saying that your business or anyone else's business is trying to be shady. I just want, I want the Harvard district to be okay, yeah, I think the, uh, the the business plan would uh, you know nod to each one of the the concerns here. But I think the, the first order we, in other work that we've done, the first order of business was to measure demand before we go to the next step, looking at sites and then looking at permitting. So that may be uh, uh, down the line. But the first thing would, I think might be to, to look at demand, depending on what the community wanted. But, but thank you, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for your input. Anything else? I think we got the boatyard thing taken care of. Uh, All right. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you. And thanks again to the Yacht Club for um, the facility. It's really Thank nice. Cozy. Cozy and festive. <laughs>